Let's now look at process pipes. To help you understand a process pipe, let's look at an example. So, first of all, I've got a demo folder here, and in there I happen to have an audio file, boing.wav. Uh, also installed on my system is the ALSA play command, a play, and if you pass it an audio file, it's pretty smart. It can find out what sort it is, and it plays. If we want to suppress those messages, we can put it in quiet mode. Okay, so that's a play. So that's doing all the sort of heavy lifting um, for playing audio files. If we just type a play on its own, it blocks on standard in. Now you might think, why on earth would I want to type in audio files? Well, you wouldn't, is the truth of it, but you might want to pipe data to standard in and get it to play the files that you generate. So I'm going to press Control D and we're going to switch now to Eclipse where I've got some code. So probably the easiest way to explain this is to just step through the code. Um, just a couple of things before we do. Uh, I've got a type definition here, sample. That's just an alias for unsigned character, which is an 8-bit number. Okay, I'm going to be generating some samples, some digital samples, uh, 8,000 samples per second for five seconds, and uh, given that information, I'm actually calculated how big a buffer I need to store five seconds of data at 8K. So I'm going to generate a sort of uh, sci-fi sound using a little aliasing, tri aliasing trick I know, um, details of which you don't need to worry about. So. First of all, we have this array. They're unsigned characters, I've called them sample. Uh, it's called buffer, and it's that number of bytes in length. Uh, I've got a little for loop here, which calculates some samples. Think of them as, as voltage values on a pin on a chip that maybe go to an amplifier. Um, so you don't need to know the worries about that. All you do need to know is that in this array buffer, we now have some audio samples that I want to play. Now, I could get down into the operating system and look at the device drivers for the audio, or I could use that A play utility I just showed you to play it for me. So if you remember, A play blocks on standard in, waiting for binary audio samples to be written to it. So how do we get a pipe from my bit of code to a play. Well, one thing I could do is I could get my code simply to write data to stand it out, and I could use an anonymous pipe and hook the two up together. But uh, that involves breaking out of my program and configuring things properly in a terminal. It's actually a lot more convenient to um, use a process pipe. And let's now step through the code and see what that is. So I'm going to hit debug. I'm going to switch to the debug perspective and I'm going to step through my code. So, first of all, there's this for loop that uh, generates my samples. Um, we don't really want to uh, sit and step through all of that, so I'm going to put a breakpoint in here and hit continue. Okay, so the code has stopped at this breakpoint. Now, this is where we're getting into process pipes. Output stream is of type file star. That's a C stream. Um, that's the sort of thing you would get back from something like fopen for opening a file. Um, in this case, we're using popen. And the first argument is essentially a command. A play, well, that's the program we're going to launch, and then some parameters. Now, minus t raw means it's just raw bytes, not a WAV file or an MP3 or anything like that, just raw samples. Minus little r, 8,000 means the sampling rate, the number of samples per second is 8,000, and minus q suppresses anything that appears out on the terminal. So, and we've also got a second parameter, w, which is for write. So what does popen do? Well, essentially, it opens a play as a child process in its own memory space, right, separate from my application here, and it connect, creates a pipe. Uh, because it's in write mode, the, uh, the end of the pipe, the far end, 
will go into standard in of a play and output stream is the uh, is our end of the pipe um, for for write write access so whenever we open if we're open for write then we're going to write data into the pipe and it's going to go into standard in of whatever application we run if i had opened it for read then uh, the pipe would have connected to standard out of a play and this would have been an, an input stream that we would be reading okay so i'm going to step over that and that has now run a play with these parameters and it's now blocking on standard in uh, we could go and have a look ps minus u and we'll see sure enough a play is actually uh, running well, at the moment it's uh, it, it's blocked okay so the next thing we do quite simply is do a write so but before we do that I want to use Unix um, open read write close class of functions so for the stream output stream I'm calling file number uh, that extracts the file descriptor which is just an integer from that stream okay so now we've got the file descriptor we can use plain old write and that's great because it's not buffered and it's simple so we've got the file descriptor the address of where the data stored and the number of bytes so what's that going to do it's going to write all those bytes to that file descriptor now this file descriptor doesn't represent a file on the, in the in the file hierarchy it represents a kernel memory resident pipe which is connected to a play so when we step over that it plays my samples you can echo how many bytes are written, which was 40,000. And then we close the pipe. The uh, child application should now be closed. Indeed, it's gone. And we quit. So in summary, popen does, in this case, two things for us. It launches a child process and it connects a unidirectional pipe to that process, either to standard in or standard out depending on the mode. We get the other end of the pipe so we can read or write data to or from it.